Hey everyone, I've got three different battery setups here in front of me. Did you know these are all actually the same thing, just in a different configuration? Hey, welcome, it's Scott from Texas Prepper Projects, and today we're going to talk about the various configurations of batteries from my favorite company, WattCycle, what the advantages and disadvantages of each of them are. All right, let's get going. So as I mentioned, all three of these are actually the same. We have a 12 volt, 628 amp hour battery. Over here, we have a 24 volt, 314 amp hour battery. These are exactly the same. They just, the voltage is higher and the amperage is lower because inside there is this, which is two 12 volt, 314 amp hour batteries on a little cart. I can turn this into either one of these depending upon if I series or parallel them. So with some wires, I can connect either positive, positive, negative, negative, or positive, negative together to push the voltage up. So why would you want one of these over the other? It's a really great question because there's so many choices. How do you know what's the right one? So the first advantage to the separate unit is that they're lighter. These things are really, really heavy, which is why they're on carts. They're like 130, 140 pounds. They're really heavy because they're also, they're in a metal case. The separated batteries are in a plastic case and they're separated. So individually they weigh like 55 pounds, but that's easier to pick up and move. I cannot move these by myself. And my wife and I together are also not that strong. So we had to pick them up together and put them on these little carts to be able to move them. So this is not something that I want to be uh, transporting very frequently and I got to put it on a cart. So the advantage to having two separate batteries is that they are individually lighter. You could take them apart and you can move them around easier and put them back together if you had to. Also, depending upon which version of this you get, they are less expensive. Currently, the uh, non-Bluetooth version with my code is $360. So 360 times two is 720 with no Bluetooth, which makes them less than the, in, than the joint batteries. It's not a fair comparison though, because the bigger batteries have Bluetooth in them. So if you were to do a Bluetooth version of these, then they would be pretty darn close depending upon what the sale is. Um, all throughout Christmas, the 12 volt was on sale, the 24 was not, they keep kind of shuffling back and forth. Um, so it's, it's hard to say that with certainty, but generally speaking, the individual batteries are less expensive because they're not in metal cases. The downside to that is you have additional wiring. Okay, so you've got another cost of you know 20 bucks or so for some two gauge, which is kind of my minimum standard. They do take up a little less space um, just because of the build, um, but also the battery terminals are on the top and on the bigger batteries, they're on the sides, which I think is nicer. I like having them on the side. It, it kind of keeps them out of the way and makes them a little more protected. So you have kind of a, a physical difference. I don't know if anyone has ever demonstrated this before. So here you can see the actual size difference of two batteries together versus one great big one. Now, depending upon how you wire these, if you're doing in 12 volts, then you sort of have built-in redundancy, right? Like if one battery fails, you still have another battery. So if you're a super hardcore prepper, um, you've got sort of a, a, a built-in failsafe. The downside to having two batteries is the charging. It is possible, so when you have two batteries linked together, you need to charge them both up individually to get them to an even state. And then as you discharge them and recharge them, sometimes they will start to get out of sync and then you have to rebalance them. 
uh, for an emergency system that's going to get used rarely, like mine, I'm not really worried about that. But if you were building an off-grid system that's going to be charged and discharged all day, every day, I would be more concerned about that. Okay? So interesting thought experiment. What would you rather have? There's also the idea that if you're doing a pure 12 volt system, you could buy one battery now, and a couple months later, you could buy another battery and then just chain them and just series, uh, parallel them over and over and over again. I personally do not like to link more than two batteries together. That is my personal preference. I've seen videos of people linking 50 batteries together um, and doing 48 volt systems and stuff like that. That is purely my preference. I don't like to go more than two. That's just me. Okay? So they're all sort of the same minus the Bluetooth. So, but you know, this is the same capacity, 8,000 watt hours as this or this. All right. So let's talk about 12 versus 24. Now I really have two identical systems. So these are, this is 12 volts, 24 volts, 628 amp hours or 314 amp hours. These are exact same batteries with just wired there differently. And I have a 1200 watt inverter on this one and I have a 1200 watt inverter on this one. So this is obviously a 12 volt inverter. This is a 24 volt inverter, both from Gandale. So these systems are identical. So why would you do one over the other? I am a huge fan of 24 volts. And there are two really big reasons for that. Number one is that as your voltage goes up, your current draw goes down. And so the amount of amperage that I'm pulling out of the battery and through my wiring is half what it is on 12 volts. So the system is just a little bit safer because the amount of current that I'm pulling is coming through. You know, if this thing has a like a 300 is a 300 amp bms so 300 amps on 12 volts is a lot so you're gonna have like an at four wire that's like this big around it's going to cost you a whole bunch of money on 24 volts i can cut the the amperage in half and use reasonable sized wire the other big difference is the bms so both of the big batteries have 300 amp bmss but since the current is cut in half or doubled with 24 volts versus 12, that means I can pull double the amount of power out of this battery out of, than out of the 12. So if I had something really, really, really big, a couple of thousand watts, I could pull that out of the 12, 24 volt and I couldn't pull it out of the 12 because the BMS would shut off. So I use a two gauge for my standard hookups, which is good to about 100, 120 amps. At 24 volts, that means I can pull 2,2400 2, watts out of this safely. At 12 volts, it's only around 1,000 to 1,200 thereabouts, depending on how far you want to push it. Uh, how I got that is I used the rule 10 to 1. So 1,000 watts on the inverter is 100 amps coming out of the battery. I've tested this a couple of times. That's actually a little high, but it makes the math really simple. So if you're going to be routinely pulling a thousand watts, that means you're going to be routinely pulling a hundred amps out of your battery. So make sure your wire is sized appropriately. On 24 volts, that gets cut in half. So if I'm pulling a thousand watts on 24 volts, I'm only pulling about 50 amps out of the battery, which is much, much, much safer, particularly for wire, you know, at four gauge, uh, 50 amps, uh, I stick around eight gauge as a minimum, preferably a four. So I can sort of safely pull larger power out of 24 than I can out of 12. The other thing that makes 24 volts really cool is that you can get more power out of your solar charge controller. So this is a so MPPT, also from Watt Cycle, and this is rated for 12 or 24 volts. Now, this unit you see here, the little label says at 12 volts, it's rated up to 600 watts. At 24 volts, it's rated up to 1200 watts. So I can get more power out of this from my panels that are over there 
into the battery by raising the voltage. So I can charge these identical batteries. If I hooked up the same solar panel to here or to here, I could charge this faster or I can put more power into this because the minimum voltage is higher that this will accept. So it's a way to cheat and save some money just by raising your voltage up. Now, people will say, well, what about my 12-volt appliances I want to run? Well, if you look really closely, most vehicular appliances like RV refrigerators, RV DC blankets will run on 24 volts as well. I have a Bouge RV refrigerator right over there, and the sticker on the back says 12 or 24 volts. So double check your appliance but most things I have seen will run on either. And I have been told from a friend that they uh, RV refrigerator runs better on 24 volts than it does at 12. The higher voltage means the compressor doesn't have to work quite so hard. That's anecdotal, but interesting. If you really, 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 really had a 12 volt appliance you really wanted to run, like say ham radio gear or 12 volt LEDs that wouldn't go above 12 volts, a, a step down, a voltage regulator to step from 24 down to 12 is not expensive depending upon how much power you're pulling. They're like 20 bucks. So not a big deal. So where would I use a 12 volt uh, battery, a big one like this? There is a minor draw that 24 volt inverters are slightly more expensive than 12 just because they're not quite so common. So if I had a 12 volt only device like a ham radio repeater, this makes sense. The other application that I can see a 12 volt only battery making a lot of sense is for an RV where all of your lights and applying all of your fixtures in an RV are already set up for 12 volts. So like your lights, your water pump, if you have an igniter for a propane heater or something like that, like the vehicle is kind of already set up for 12 volts, it might not be worth all of the stuff that you would have to do to convert to 24. So I think that's your big winner. If you're doing, you know, a big trailer, you know, a, an RV or teardrop or something like that where you needed big power, then this makes sense. And the metal case, I think the difference between here and the dual battery setup, the metal case is more durable. And again, like I said, the battery terminals on the side to me, I think makes installation easier. So use a, a big 12 volt uh, in a mobile application and then you're 24 in a sort of a fixed environment and kind of for everything else. So great products. I've been using watt cycle stuff for many, many, many years. There's constantly sales happening. Things go up and down throughout Christmas, but I've got uh, an exclusive 10% discount code down below that'll save you money on whatever configuration you think works best for you. Hope this was helpful, everybody. Thanks, everybody. We'll see you on the next one.